Hey everybody, welcome back to DigiBros! I think I've just encountered an interesting aspect that I've never had to face before of being in a relationship and living with that person. Oh, yeah. Because I've, I've been at... I've been here with Conrad for a long time and it's getting to be like 6 o'clock which is usually like dinner time and I'm like, oh yeah, Hope's gonna cook dinner tonight. I have to be there to eat dinner and help make dinner and I'm here. Do I need to like, I don't know if she's home yet, she was hanging out with friends. Now I have to like communicate and, and maybe I'll have to go home so I can get dinner, you know, make dinner with my girlfriend. Well, you Truly in a relationship. Come back and continue Digi Bros after I don't that. know. Might just chill at <laughs> home. I mean, I've, it'll still take me several more hours to beat this DLC, I think. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta keep it uh, a stable of episodes here. Yeah. Oh! Jesus. Fuck. I just got shrecked. <laughs> <coughs> so, we were just discussing uh, financial stuff, and oh, I wanted to get into you can keep going. the most difficult thing about doing work on the internet or in media or anything like that is there's no understanding for for us or for the people we're working with of what the fuck we're worth. No yeah. one can really p pinpoint. You can't. You can't quantify the the value of art. Because the thing is, and this is the way that it that 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 industries go. When things lower in value, it lowers it for everybody, yes. right? Like, let's say you've got, let's say you've got two supermarkets. One of them selling milk for three dollars. The other one slashes it down to two. Everyone's gonna go to the two dollar. Yeah. No one's gonna go to the three. Why would you? And so they ruin it for the other people, you know? And it's good for the consumer. The pricing is competitive. But the question is, how can the business afford to do that? Yes. How can they afford to make that happen? Um, they've got to be, you know, making money from some, somewhere else. So on the internet, as artists, we face the issue that there is an infinite amount of free entertainment. Yes. And so how can it possibly be worth anything? You know, like, to the consumer, it's it just isn't. Like, unless... The only reason they give you money is that they feel like it. That they want you to keep doing the thing you're doing. That they appreciate that you need money to make it happen. But they can get your stuff for free. And if they can't, they will either steal it or they'll go to somebody else. They'll take their business elsewhere. You know? Like, I couldn't paywall my videos. They would just die. Not enough people would want to watch them or would respect my decision to paywall them, <laughs> that they'd be willing to, that, that I'd be able to grow it all. You know, it would just become, like, whoever's willing to pay for it, that would become, like, a really small niche audience. Yeah. Who probably grow tired to, to introduce someone to somebody that they pay for, you know? Exactly. You'd be like, oh, go watch this guy's video. It costs $10. I can't even introduce people to shows that'll cost money. Like, when I talk about, uh... A show that like you have like there's no easy way to stream it. Then it's like, how do you even make somebody watch this? You yeah. Know? Like, there you're not gonna say, oh, go buy the DVDs. Yeah, they're gonna go to Kiss Anime, dude. You know, they're no. gonna find an illegal stream, and if they can't, they're not gonna watch it. You know, uh, that's the culture we're in. And with with YouTube, like the only way that my videos are worth some something to someone is if. Like, the the mere fact that people are watching it makes it valuable to companies, right? Yes. Advertisers or people who are trying to sell something. Well, I mean, that's the same thing, but, you know, people like, like something like Audible or something like that. But how much is it worth? How much are the eyeballs worth? Because ads don't work. No one cares. Yeah. No one's clicking on them. No one's, like, I mean, they're worth the, you know, whatever the company thinks eyeballs themselves are worth. Which is something, yeah. but, but what is it? How it's just worth awareness. It? Like you can't yeah. buy a product that you don't know exists. And how that's much can the they? Of how much can they spend on the advertising? You know, how much? How much is it worth? If if I put a you know, I mean, with something like Crunchyroll, there's maybe a, a exacting dollar. All they got to do is give me a link, and they pay me five dollars if someone follows that link. So. The worth is determined just by how many people follow the link and sign up, you know? Like, I could make $100 in a month off of that. I could make 500 in a month if a lot of people click the link. You know, they've decided what the link itself is worth. 
Um, but how much is it worth to me to like to go through on advertising? How is it going to affect the way people perceive me, or you know all this other shit? There's just so many questions. But like, fuck, there is, there must be worth there. And the problem is, how do you explore that worth? Here's a, here's a, a tangent from your thing because it's on a, it's relevant to advertising that I've been thinking about. Because Dick Masterson had been talking about that that stupid fucking Coke ad that everyone knows about, or the Pepsi ad. Oh, the, with the, uh, the, the fucking protest, that the, the yeah. most fucking disgusting ad in the fucking universe. But uh, the thing with that ad is that they're they're saying uh, that you're looking at Pepsi. An older generation already drinks Pepsi. Like you're you're not gonna introduce old people to Pepsi. That's not who you're, who you're gonna market it towards. They're trying to market it towards millennials because millennials aren't drinking Pepsi. Apparently. Yeah. Well, because. The, the crowd they're showing in that video is the, the kind of crowd that would not drink soda. There are a bunch of fucking vegans in, like, they're, they're this hippie protest crowd. Like, they, trendy, they, trendy protesters who are doing, they know consuming what, trendy like, shit is it, what they're trying to portray. It's really funny to me. But like, the thing is, that's where I'm getting with, okay. where it's like, our generation already knows, like, we don't we drink know soda because we, know what, yeah. exactly, because we know what Pepsi is. It's like, <laughs> exactly. if you're going to advertise, you have to advertise to, like, little kids who have never heard of Pepsi. Like, you have to have never heard of Pepsi for a Pepsi ad to entice you into drinking a Pepsi. Yeah. So they try to treat millennials like they're a bunch of fucking idiots. Like, hey, look, uh, Pepsi cares about issues well, you care about. To, to me, like, with, with something like Pepsi, the reason that they should be running ads is simply to instill a desire for it. Yeah. Like... Everyone knows about it because it's ubiquitous. You can't go somewhere and not see yeah. Pepsi. It's like, like you've tried a Pepsi. Yeah. yeah. Everyone knows convinced. what Pepsi is. No one has to be talked into it. It's just like we will see it if we go out anywhere. Like we were like you go to the grocery store, you go to uh, the convenience store, you go to a restaurant, Pepsi is there. Yeah. So the only thing they can possibly do with an ad is make you want a Pepsi right now. Yes. Like, it's not about introducing you to the concept of or, Pepsi. Or convince you that it's, it's not as bad as, as what people are saying it is. Like, everyone knows soda's shit now. Yeah. So, like, you're not going to get uh, uh, socially conscious millennials into Pepsi if they're not drinking Pepsi. Like, they, they're they they're not drinking it for a purpose. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, the way to do that would be to, like, you know, to have them donate all their proceeds to a charity or something. Yeah. That maybe people will like actually do something instead of like being like hey bro uh, Pepsi protest <laughs> uh, it's so uh, what a god awful experience but anyways what I was what I was getting more towards is like I I know for a fact via observation that I could be making a lot more money than I am off the stuff I'm doing but I don't know what it's worth because I'm willing to do it for free. Yeah. And this is kind of an issue that you and I both have, is that, like, like you undersell yourself yes. on purpose just so you can get work. Yeah. But you deliberately, <laughs> you, you go for, like, the cheapest rates possible. And what you're giving people, there's others who would pay more for it, but you can't... You can't get yeah. that work. I, I need the work and I need the portfolio, so I'm, yeah. I'm glad to be getting paid anything because a lot of, like, a lot of people have been building up work for free for longer, you know? Yeah. Whereas... I can't afford to be free right now, so it's like, if I can get a hundred bucks, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And for me, but, I kind of reached a comfort point where I don't feel the need to make more than I have, even though I could use it. Like, I could... Like, for instance, with the whole RV thing, like, suddenly what kind of RV I can afford goes up dramatically if I'm making a lot more money, which is why I'm thinking about it now, that I'm starting to be like, well, shit, I should be, I should be taking advantage of this somehow, because, like, first of all, I could have way more ad deals, yeah. I, which, but I don't like those, you know? I yeah. feel like there's a lot more... I just give away too much stuff. <laughs> you know, like, that's the issue with me. It's not that I'm not maximizing on the stuff I am already, like... Like, my main videos, you know, if all they make is Patreon and ad money, fine. Like, I don't want to yeah. ruin them with a bunch of advertisements, um, you know, just for a couple thousand extra dollars. It, you know, it, it might even be worth it, but I just don't want to be that. 
but the stuff I'm putting out is worth something to people just in its existence. There's lots of people who will say, like, you know, I care more about After Dark than I do about the main channel. Yeah. And After Dark is basically, uh, it just makes a couple bucks a video off of whatever it gets from ad revenue. And, like, from my perspective, it's like, well, I shot this video in 20 minutes, uh, so if I make $10 off of it, that's a good amount. That's $10 for 20 minutes of work. But what is it worth, you know? Because what, what matters to it is not how much work I put into it. It's that I made it. It's that it's a unique perspective. It's something that you can't get from somebody else. It's something that is that's worth something to the audience. So even if, to me, it's only worth $10, if I make a video like, say, uh, Objectivity Doesn't Fuck You or uh, Anime Shit, these are some of my vlogs that people really, really love, people would probably be willing to pay as much for that video as they would for a main channel video. Because yeah. it's not about the effort I put in, it's about what they're getting out of it. Yeah. They're getting something out of it that they really appreciate and, and love. And I'm, you know, I'm giving them something that to them is as good as a main channel product, but I'm making ten dollars, you know, yeah. uh, as opposed to fifteen hundred. And I'm just looking at this, and I'm thinking like, there's this, 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 this can't be the right way to go about this. Like, surely the sheer amount of content I'm putting out is worth more than what I'm allowing myself to make, from, you know. But how do I determine which things are worth more? How do I determine... Like, if I tried to change my Patreon in such a way that it was, uh, you know, main channel stuff and side stuff, well, which side stuff is worth it? Which thing? Because different people care about different things. Is there a way for me to set up a just donation system per video? Like, hey, if you particularly like this video, throw me a dollar, you know? Like, is there a way to capitalize Fuck. on the worth of the stuff oh that's ass, not man. worth that much, but is worth more than $10, yeah. you know? Like, I don't know how to capitalize on that. And sometimes people do just send me pay... Like, people sometimes PayPal me, like, 5 or 10 bucks because just some vlog they really liked, yeah. you know, or, like, a song came out and they couldn't stop listening to it, and they're like, here's some money for that song, you know? Yeah. I'm like, sick. Uh, that's always great. But how do I make that something regular that people uh, can that people know that they can do that? You know, because there's got to be a way. There's got to be more. I yeah. should be doing. I should be having multiple revenue streams because just making money through Patreon and uh, and ad rev is just not taking advantage of my talents. Yeah. You know that I'm cranking out this content all the time. And like Mumkey, within four episodes of us doing Insufferable Social Media podcast, was like. Let's do a bonus episode. Let's see if we can make money from this. You know, like, we're only making five bucks in ad rev on each episode, but people seem to enjoy the show. So he very quick, like, that show, if we had made four episodes, and that was all we made in the month, then that show would have made us $15 for that month. Instead, we made a bonus episode, and within a day, a hundred people bought it. So we made a hundred dollars for over that show in a month, you know? Now imagine if I applied this same logic to my entire After Dark channel, where I put out several videos a day sometimes, yeah. you know? Like, if four episodes of this podcast are worth $100 for both me and uh, Mumkey, why, or, like, or, you know, between us, then surely five videos on After Dark should also be netting me a hundred dollars, you know, or more, because more people watch After Dark than watch the Insufferable Social Media Argument podcast. But which videos are worth it? You know, what am I going to start paywalling? What am I going to start uh, asking for money for? You know, yeah. um, you know, and if I it, every time you paywall a piece of content, that's something that's not yeah. netting in new viewers. Especially you know? if you're 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 just charging more to the 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 same fans, you know, like. If you start charging extra for some of your After Dark stuff, that's already the people who are paying for your Patreon. Yeah, exactly. You know? So it's but like now you're just but, double charging but at this, people. Yeah, and I don't want to ever, I don't want to charge them for anything extra. But some of them probably would be willing to pay for the After Dark videos. Yeah. They'd be willing to pay extra for the fact that they love those videos. Um, but they already feel like they're paying for me through the the, the Patreon. You know, because for a lot of people, the Patreon's not just for the main channel. It's just a general support platform. You know, yeah. but if it's that. Then it should be more. 
you know, than, than what it is uh, as, a, as a as as a video thing. So yeah, it's it's very complicated, and it's like again because I'm kind of comfortable, I don't feel like this need to change it, but I feel like I should because I I feel like I'm throwing money away by not yeah. doing it. Like, there's there's clearly all this work that's not being capitalized on, and um, isn't translating to profit for me, and. I'm just not sure how to go about fixing that. But, like, just the fact that Monkey so quickly found a way to make money off the Insufferable Social Media Argument podcast. And I was like, why am I not doing this something? He's the kind of guy who'd ask for a raise. Yeah. <laughs> well, just the, you know, within a month of us starting up the show, he's found a way to make it profitable, uh, you know, off of the five hours that we put into that each week. And, and now we've got the, like, there's a Patreon for the, um... The procrastinators, you know? And, like, on the one hand, I'm not really participating that much in uh, in the show or the editing and stuff because of the fact that, like, um, you know, everybody else is more encouraged to do it, and I've got a million other projects. But, like, I'm making, like, 35 bucks off the first month of that, you know? And I'm like, hell, 35 bucks? I probably only showed up on one episode that month. Yeah. That's 35 bucks for one hour. You know, of, of my time. I didn't edit the episode. All I, all I did was show up and contribute my unique talent. Maybe I was on two. I don't remember. But yeah, 35 bucks for for what to me was not a huge amount of effort. But what it's worth to the fans is is that amount. Yeah. You know. So now I've got to look at it like I'm just giving so much away. And maybe that's part of why people are supporting me. Because they yeah. like that I'm giving such, so much stuff away, you know? And I don't want to start charging for everything we do or some shit. Like, a lot of it's fucking vapid. A lot of it I don't think anybody can pay for. Um, but then, some of it surely oh, is worth something. Wreck that motherfucker. Oh, God. And I just gotta figure out how to give people an outlet. Like, I wish, I wish, uh, you know, on Bandcamp, then there's the people who, who release the Pay Anything album. You know, it's you can download it for free. You don't have to pay anything, but you can pay anything. Yeah. And I'd love to have that for every YouTube video I make. They're all free, but if you liked it, maybe throw a dollar. Yeah. You know, and I feel like I could make more that way than I do by it's a picking service. and choosing which videos people pay for. You gotta have a maybe find a, a tipping website. There are there are websites like that. Yeah. There's like a tip. There's one specifically like called. And you can, there's a tip box on YouTube. And in fact, a way that a lot of people are making money now is that if you're live streaming on YouTube, then people can like pay whatever to have uh, like just like a, a, a message that gets bolded. I see. Like it just kind of becomes like a, like a more apparent message. Yeah. And, uh, and you pay and it, it'll show up that way. And like, yeah, so lots of people are getting into live streams just because like people will pay you just because they're in the live stream. Yeah. Like, Monkey Jones has made, like, $10 just because he happened to live stream at people who wanted to pay for it. Yeah, like, that's the thing, because, again, there's value in this stuff. Like, people who just like you will, yeah. th will, will throw money at you if there's a reason, if there's, like, anything there that they can get out of it, you know? And it's like, if I'm just constantly churning out free content, then it, like, it just doesn't even seem like I want any. This boss actually changes depending on which one you killed first. I see. It, it, I haven't bought this one before. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's different. You have to do the giant laser. The giant laser is like super easy to get a fuckload of hits in. Uh, Seems like he has less health. That'd be great. Yeah, you're doing more damage. I like doing more damage. I was doing like 200 something before. Yeah, but you're, I mean, his health is going down farther than you do that. He has less health. Be wrong. But, uh, yeah, so that's that thing. This guy's all pretty much. And me and me and Tom have really been discussing this and like trying to find ways uh, to, to do stuff. And like one of the things that, that Tom told me that like blew my mind, uh, and you'll hear this on a podcast, I don't know if I was putting it out. If anyone wants to tip me for fat and dangerous, uh it'd yeah. be much appreciated. Like, I think I did a great job on that video and it I, I could have made, you know, if, if, if we were professionals, it would have been paid a lot. 
Um, I did, did that with simple means, but even though, like, yeah, but you had there is a factor of, like, oh yeah, I was going to say something about, uh, about cheapening the value of things, where it's like, I kind of really broke the system by having pretty much my dad buy me an expensive camera, yeah. because, like, that someone with that camera should be getting a certain rate, but I have not done the work that would have afforded me the camera, and therefore, like, I can't charge that rate, you know? Even though I'm making, you know, that kind of quality content. Just interesting. Um, yeah, and, like, <laughs> um, well, yeah. well, I was trying to remember what I was trying to uh, I just, I, I tend to, tr to abruptly end my point. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, that point's made. Moving on. Jones, hell yeah. Oh, bitch. Bitch, please. Uh, this guy has a much easier time on these bosses. Cause I just had like some hand axe when I fought all these bosses before, and it was a nightmare. And now I have like one of the, the highest attack weapons in the fucking game, I think. Anyway, what I was going to say that blew my mind when I was talking to Tom is that he makes a lot of money off of his Amazon Associates link. Mm -hmm. You've heard of these, right? Yeah. And, like, it blew my mind, not only because of how much it was worth, but because he only has 10,000 subscribers and yeah. he's barely advertised it. Now, granted... Doesn't he do, like, product reviews, though? Yeah, he does so, yeah. product reviews, and he's talking about big, expensive things, so he's more likely to make a shitload of money off of it. But just... Because all the Amazon Associates link is, is that someone just clicks the link and anything they buy on Amazon, you make a part of it, you know? Yeah. But he's, like, barely even talked about this link, and he was making, like, hundreds of dollars. He was making more off that link than he is on Patreon. Good lord. He's not, not, not making shit on Patreon, <laughs> you know? So, like, I'm sitting here looking at him, and I'm like, if Tom can make that much off of his Amazon Associates link, I could make ten times that off of an Amazon Associates link. Yeah, in theory. And I would barely have to do anything to announce the fact that I have one. Yeah. So that's, again, money I'm just throwing away by not <laughs> engaging with it, you know? Which, this Studio 71, when I joined, they, like, like part of their process is they give you one. So, like, yeah. I am definitely getting one from them. Um, I don't know when. They've been... Goondir. Ooh, cool. They've been less in contact than I would like. Which guy was this? Goondir? I should probably email them. Wasn't he a boss? Uh, I think so. Gundir. His stuff looks pretty cool. I'm a boss. I need to get, like, a fuckload of fucking, uh, endurance -y things so I can wear all the big stuff. Next time on Digibros. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs>